declaration of public health emergency and the related emergency executive order dated March 12, 2020, the town of Citra public meeting shall meet remotely until further notice. Um, and I'm gonna call the meeting to order at 7.01. And um, we do have to take a vote on that. Um, so I'll call people out. Um, Dave? Here. Um, Jeff? Here. Mike? Where'd Mike go? I'll go to Scott. <laughs> There's one. Here. Here. <clears throat> and Scott. Oh, sorry, Mike. Locked. Oh, no. He's like. He's on mute. Oh, he's trying. Sorry, guys. We're waiting a minute. Mike. On mute there, Michael. I think he's frozen. Yeah, he's. he's there got there yeah, can. Are you good now? Yeah. Thanks, All bro. right. So we we do have a quorum for for us um, is a quorum, and we've got five of us. Um, first agenda item: discussion approval meeting, meeting minutes. Unfortunately, our recording secretary couldn't make it tonight, so we're going to have to put that to the next agenda, to the next meeting that we schedule next month. Um, so our main event is an update and discussion on North and South River recreational shellfish closure notice and um we have a couple updates mike did you want to start with the updates that since our last meeting it, susan you're, you're kind of cutting in and out i'm not sure if it's you yeah i think it's um i think it's your dial-up connection mike <laughs> i don't know can everyone hear me yeah I'm, I'm not having any trouble hearing you susan okay and i got a thumbs up from scott who's sitting on the beach over there. Um, oh, Dave's here. Welcome, Dave. You missed nothing but me reading the executive order statement. It may be um, Mike's internet connection. So if he, he wants to call in with a, a phone um, on the number that's on the agenda, that could be better since he has kind of a pivotal role tonight. He does, and I um, can actually read the phone number if anybody else hey, wants to or hey one one second hang on let me uh check my wi-fi here i mean i should be i should be good i got full service is that any better now that is yeah better. it's good now <clears throat> all right awesome i'm uh, i'm kind of outside but the changes I'll, I'll go back in the house but uh, i should have good service here okay everybody, everybody good or yeah, we can hear you. So we're we're um we're we're on to discussion of the North and South River recreational shellfish and update. And I was hoping you could start with an update, and I can add some other information too. Absolutely, love to. So welcome back, everybody. No, it's been a little bit. So uh, happy to see everybody on Zoom, and maybe next month we can maybe meet in person, which would be great. So since uh the closure in the last meeting, the uh. Division of Marine Fisheries has continued testing the citrate sewer plant um, every every week on Mondays, I believe. And um, the regular testing for fecal coliform has been ongoing to include Citrate Harbor and, and to include MB10, which is Cohasset Break Harbor. They're doing that as well with the help of the environmental police. Um, I kind of want to work a little closer with uh, Marshall Citrate Cohasset for our mutual aid agreement of uh, sharing boat resources so we can continue to sample more. So I think that's in the works. So here we are, the dye test and the dilution study, which is the big trigger points for the rivers, right? So in talking with uh, marine fisheries as early as today and every, every tooth I call them, nothing really much changed. The testing is ongoing. I will say the testing from the sewer plant has come back very, very well. Come back so well as much that Marine Fisheries is compiling data to hopefully in the future um, challenge the FDA's regulations of being more restrictive states are. Okay, so that's more conservative than Marine Fisheries is. So for they're partnering with 
Dartmouth for a couple for, they're hoping to get some money through through legislation, which I think for some modeling for uh things and then they went back to the F and um kind of straight articulate the different are from the state models and the and the federal models. Okay. So that's what that's been going on with that. As far as the dilution study for the situate sewer plant and the uh and the dye study, they are hot and heavy with Plymouth right now. Um, I'm told that it will be wrapped up in a couple of weeks in Plymouth, and we are next on the list. Followed by the situate sewer plant will be the Cohasset sewer plant. And I asked them today if there would be any impact to any oyster aquaculture to Cohasset Bridge Harbor area. And at this time, they couldn't really answer it until they did the studies up there. But the good news is Plymouth is almost done. And I mean, we, we all, we all kind of knew that Situate and Marshall would, would take a back seat to the Kingston, just the economic engine with the area. What it is, I mean, I knew that they uh, were able to fix. But the good news is, I mean, I feel very strongly that Marine Fisheries is doing the best they can. I mean, I know some people are not happy with the speed of government, and I get that, but I think they are doing the best they can and they do have our best interests. I firmly believe that. And I said that before, and I know some people kind of doubted that, you know, that was kind of doom and gloom. I, I do not think the rivers, the North River would be open ever again due to the location of the sewer plant. That's just my personal opinion. Um, the areas by Damas Point and definitely the, all the South River, I see professionally, I see no reason why that couldn't be open. If the tide's flowing, I don't know um, the stronger than the South River will be, just the river, but the South River flows up very, very well. So that's kind of good news. There's some 313 acres in the South River for Marshall and Situate, and I think you're, you may lose a little bit in the North River. However, uh, the South River offers a lot of good areas to uh, do propagation projects and grow um, steamers and cohogs. So anything thus far. Okay, thanks, Mike. And I, I also have been in contact with DMF and I, they were unable to come to this meeting tonight because they had a um, training session that they were offering, but said that they we could schedule them to come to a meeting our next meeting. So um, that's another yeah. update. And I will say I'm I'm encouraged. I do think that they're under-resourced or under-resourced for this new undertaking of, of testing. And they've got some money and partnerships with UMass Dartmouth in the works. And I think that would, would really allow them to do a lot more testing. Um, so did anyone from the, so what I'll do is anyone from the board want to say anything or have any questions for Mike and then we'll open it up for other um, questions. We have a couple more we have a couple more things Susan and I okay. just kind of want to follow. Sure. Yeah so 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 moving on um, they're they've been testing Suture Harbor as well and I've been in contact with uh, one of the girls Holly from there as well. So they're gonna be pushing for Suture Harbor pretty well and I'm not gonna say yes or no but the, the goal is to get some some of or a portion of situate harbor open in the near future okay that's good news for situate um all the cliffs are on sewer now i've emailed them this this goes back probably two three years ago where i, I sat down with kevin caffrey from dpw i went over all the dpw projects with sewer all the cliffs and all the updated um sewer I mean, the front street and all of that so all that we that's part of pollution soil sand and the road runoff pollution, which is like, um, you know, dogs near the harbor or, or cormorants, all that. So they look, they, they will be doing a sanitation study of Citrus Harbor in the in the very near future. So once that's done, based that that may be truly or conditionally approved. That could also be an area for growing oysters potentially. So I don't, don't want to put the cart in front of the horse because we're still dealing with the Brace Harbor stuff, but I mean, I mean, I, I think it's very important for the people in the residents of Marshall and Stitcher that Marine Fisheries is doing what they can. You know, it's not fast, but at least they're doing it. And I think if they do get some legislation money, and I, I really think they will, especially for UMass Dartmouth. I know 
know uh, Marine Fisheries did get some grant money last go round to the Seaport Economic Council. Um, I will say I sit on the Seaport Economic Council Port Professionals Group. I'm one of the persons that review all the grants. Um, I remember seeing the grants. I recommended the grants because uh, I had nothing to do with it. It doesn't really impact me. I don't work for UMass Boston or things like that. So I know that they are trying the best they can. You know, the speed is the speed, but at least they're doing something. You know, I mean, there's a lot of other towns like Bedford, Fall River, but they haven't even seen what's coming down the pipe. So at least we're in queue. At least we're, we're in the place. We're being looked at. And I, and, uh, and I want to say too that to uh, uh, Patrick Kearney's office and Patrick O'Connor's office, those guys work very closely together, many hours. Uh, I know Pat Kearney fired uh, Howard 38, which was trying to get a town authority for the feds. I haven't read the whole thing entirely because there was like 100 bills there from all over the state, but I know he's working on it. I know he's, been, he's an avid digger as well. Um, um, and uh, also I reached out to Pat Kearney after school vacation. And he said that the, the uh, Marine Chief and NFP met last week. Uh, so it, things are rolling. And uh, based on my conversation today with Greg Sawyer, is you know the state the position that they are going to start looking at the EHR on them and you know trying to be more conservative. You know, everybody agrees the sewer plant is in a bad spot. I know there was talk of moving the sewer plant off of a pipe off a of third. Um, I think we'll all be retired by then. It's a good thought, maybe it should have been done. You know, four years ago, but unfortunately, it is. I mean, I, I'd be very happy if we could get at least half the rivers back open. I'd be okay with that. At the South River is better. Anyone may disagree. Some are better cores and fewer diggers than I. Oh, Mike, you just, we can't, I can't hear you. Mike, why don't you try turning your video off? Maybe that'll work. No. Maybe you should call in because it's like I hear every third word. Oh, are you? I could hear it up until now. All right. Give me one second. I'm, I'm going to move. I'm going to try moving, okay? Okay. Give me one second. One second. Apologize for that. Okay. Let me just get a little closer Did to the house. Because I was hearing up until a minute ago. Okay. It was well, definitely that, spotting. Okay. That was glad the hashback. Hash, just give me a second. Is that any better now? It's I can hear you, Dave. Does that work? Yeah, let's let's keep them going. Yep. Keep All talking, right. Mike. Did you have anything else or to update? Uh, and then we on. can go to questions or yeah, comments. What, at what point did uh, did I get all staticky? So I can rehash that again. Um, you were talking about Citrus Harbor. I heard that. Okay. Uh, what was after Citrus Harbor? Situate Harbor, I was talking about the rivers, about potentially at least I'd, I'd be I'd be pleased to at least get half the rivers back. Um, right. I think if we, lost, if we lost some part of the North River, the South River has 313 acres of very good shell fishing. Um, it would probably be have to be a little more strictly managed because everybody be in the South River versus the North and South River. But I, I would be happy with, with that. I know some people probably would not, but if we can get a portion, if not 50, 60 percent back, I think it, it would be it, it would be a win based on where the sewer plant is. We all agree the sewer plant is probably in the best spot. I know there was some discussions about moving the sewer plant with the outflow pipe off a third cliff with permitting and everything else nowadays. That would be I think we'll all be retired. So. And Mike, also, can you review? You were saying something about they're they're inundated or overwhelmed or dealing with Plymouth right now, and you said we are quote unquote next on the list. And then yeah. cohasset. So, what do you mean by next? What would happen as next on the list? 
So next under this would mean they would hopefully start the dilution, the dilution and dye studies for situate. Then next would be Cohasser. And I think that's where the push through the legislation to get, get these guys some more money in their budgets and get the proper professors that can actually do this work with UMass uh, Dartmouth, I think would help. So, and, and I'm not sure if you caught me before, but uh, the Seaport Economic Conference did give marine fisheries some grant money for shellfish initiatives. I can't recall exactly what it was for, but I, I know they're getting, they're getting funding slowly but steadily. So that would be hopefully what, over the next 12 months maybe? I, that, that I, I, I hope so. I, I hope even sooner than that. I hope even mm. sooner than that. You know? But certainly not this summer. I, I wouldn't, not, I don't think this summer. I don't think so. Oh, I, I think they might, that, or at least that's what I was told. I, we should, um, when, when we invite them next month, we'll have them elaborate on the timeline. Okay. Because I think they'd start the dye test this summer. Yeah, so then uh, one more thing. There was, there was a meeting on Tuesday with the, uh, the Massachusetts Shellfish Initiative. Um, and that was kind of balancing the competitive demands of shellfishing with boaters and boat moorings, all that stuff. I know a few people are on the call and asked questions and probably didn't get the answers they were looking for. Um, but the state's looking, I mean, I think they're doing a lot more shellfish and this and that because based on what they're telling us is people shellfishing where there's boat moorings and things like that. And, I, and then I've been round and round with marine fisheries on this saying that, hey, we have, we have pump outs in the river. And also the boats that use the moorings are not boats that are like cabin cruisers with all these elaborate head systems on board, they're all day boats that, if they do have a porta potty on board, it's being hand carried off or being taken to a tight tank to be um, discharged. It's not being discharged into the waterways. So they ask also ask questions about like how many boats are overnighters and things like getting the marinas and and they're really the really the river has been very very clean. So I, if that came back to bear, I would I would fight that pretty hard. You know, also the fact that the rivers are closed all summer. So that's when the boating activity is. So how can it be an issue for shell fishing from November all the way to May when there's not even boats out there? So something to think about as well. Agreed. So, so Jeff or Scott, did you have uh, questions before we open it up for people to raise their hands and comment or questions? The, the only question I had was how, Mike, you said that we might retain 50, 60% of the North, just what, what area might be impacted and in, in closed specifically south of the sewer treatment plant or? That's, that's where the dive study comes in. And the I got you. It comes in and all, all the, like I, I, read, I talked about last month about this. I'm like, well, if everything's flowing out of the Harry River and the North River is flowing out to the New Inlet out of the mouth, how is potential contaminants uh, getting back up into the North River? That would really only occur when the tides turn. But everybody digs at low tide. You're not digging really half tide. I mean, I think the area by the New Inlet, but that big hump there where everybody goes where the steamers are at Gaggers, I, I think that would be out of play. I, I really do. So... I think all of that would be out of play. So depending on the diet study, got it. Well, yeah, I mean, no one really knows, but I, I, I mean, I would challenge up and down the entire South River of why that could be open, you know? And, th and if it gets into that, we can look even further to see, well, how come areas down towards Sea Street couldn't be open for shell fishing? So we could do more testing there as well. I mean, I, I mean, honestly, I, I know citizens and people don't like losing things that they've done for years and years with their pastime, but the, the South River has many creeks and tributaries up there, and it's that whole big acre up there, and we fought hard, and there's people on this call that fought hard probably 15 years ago to get the South River open um, after being closed for 20 years, and that was due to many, many samples in January, February, March going out there, and it was open, so it was, I believe it's like 313 acres that we opened that was closed for many, many years. So if you look at it, 15 years ago, realistically, people were only digging in the North River anyway. So it's kind of a flip-flop if you ask me. I mean, is it a win-win or is it a barter? I mean, call it what you will, but if we can get at least half back, I, I, think, I think it's a win. It's better, it's better than nothing, right? 
but you know, and if that did happen, then I mean, we, we could start doing propagation projects in the South River um, and potentially push for maybe for year round, you know, based on the fact that the water quality has been good. We know it's been good. The North Platte River watershed has sample on it. The state hasn't accepted their, their samples because it has to go to an approved lab within 24 hours and I think below 40 degrees. But those are things we could look at, you know, or maybe the town. Maybe I start seeking some grants to get the town some fun, the town's money for shellfish stuff, which I'm fairly good at. Okay, are there other questions? Um, Susan, yeah, for I, Scott, I have one question. Scott. Okay. Um, hey, Mike, sorry if this is repetitive. I was, um, I think my end was a little choppy, but my question just was around, you mentioned after Plymouth, um, Situate Cohasset would be next, um, you know, and then like other areas, like I think you said Fall River, et cetera, where they were, seemed like a little further behind. Um, what's the takeover with our neighbors in, you know, Briggs Harbor? I mean, that's Situate, but um, that, that was open. What, what did you say like with that area um, in, in North? Um, what is that looking like? Keep, oh. Keeping it open or is there jeopardy there? I think there's a little bit of jeopardy. Um, I, I don't think nothing's going to be done until they do the dive study. I think recreationally, I think we're still good to go. Um, I mean, who, who knows what was going to come out of that? And I think that's going to have to be down to the dive study, the dilution of Cohasset, of what happens there. Um, as of now, I think we're kind of in a holding pattern for the oyster aquaculture up there. But, you know, on the flip side, if they're pushing hard for Citroen Harbor now to get some sample in Citroen Harbor, maybe maybe the growing efforts shift or split up to Briggs and Citroen Harbor potentially. I mean, there's many ways to grow oysters. You don't have mm -hmm. to grow them in the mud. You can grow them in trays too on sorting docks. So there, there are options. Thanks. Okay, are we ready to open up? Are there other questions or can we open up to the to the public for questions? Go ahead. Okay. Um, does anyone want to raise their hand or have a comment? I saw that. Oh, Jamie does. Um, Dave, did, I thought Dave had a comment before, but all right, let me... Um, I don't know if I can unmute you. Did I just unmute you? Or, um, yeah. Brianna, can you unmute? Because it doesn't look I like I up. can. I can do it. Okay. Jamie has hand. You asked me if I wanted to unmute. I, I, I accept it. She, Jamie okay. has his I'm hand. I'm here. Up. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yep. Okay, good. Can you see me or? Well, you're kind of frozen. But we see a picture of you in your okay. car. <laughs> yeah, I'm at a baseball game. I'm coaching my son's baseball game. <laughs> That's the way. Uh, you know, the, the tip of the head is a steel sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, now we can't hear you. Now he's blocked. Yeah, his hand, his, his hand's still up. Yeah, but. But he's frozen. Brianna, do you know, because in my, I'm seeing it, it looks like he can speak. Is same that same on my end. I think he's frozen. That's why. Jamie, it's... call in. Yeah. Jamie, call in, and we can take another question if there's someone else who wants to speak. Yeah, it, it, he can also text me his question, too, if he, uh, he can't hear him. Yeah, on, on my end, Dave he just looks Daphne frozen. Daphne has his hand up. There we go. Unmute yourself, Dave. You got me? Yeah, yeah got him. Dave, you're, you're live. Okay, um, so did you get my letter that I sent? That you sent to Mike and the group? Yeah. Well, I, I sent it to yep. many, many people. I just wanted yes. to make sure you yes. got it. Yep. Okay. Um, there's a, there's, a, there's a few things, I guess. Number one is I'm not ready to surrender any part of the rivers. And I, and I really think this group needs to meet more than once every four months in order to keep this ball rolling. When we lose area, we're never getting it back. 
And I'm not willing to accept the fact that we can do that. Number one, why are we a recreational only area being held to meet a standard for commercial shellfish exportation? That's a federal government question, right, Mike? FDA? No, it's not. It doesn't. I already talked to US FDA. Our area is recreation only. The US FDA model ordinance that they adopted has to do with commercial exportation and importation of shellfish. There is, there is interstate transport, there is intrastate transport, and there's local. Why is this area being, being held to a standard on a national level in a recreational area of a river that has the most water testing done probably on the East Coast? But and again, why, are we, so why, why, and why are we surrendering that? Why are we surrendering that? Dave, Ooh. hang on a second. Just Mike, just so we understand the situation, the FDA yep. is the one that closed this river, right? No, yeah. it's the state. Mike? The FDA closed it. The state they did not. They did they, not, Michael. Okay, Dave. Whatever, Dave. Anyway, Dave, the, the problem with recreational and, and uh, commercial is one standard. I, I get that. I get your frustration. I think the, the concern is if somebody went out there and harvested a bushel of steamers recreationally and then some were sold to a restaurant illegally, that would cause a lot of problems. I think that's one of the concerns. You're muted again, Dave. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I. Now you're good. Okay, I don't know what happened. Not, I did not first of all, it. you're not allowed to take a bushel. You're not allowed to sell them to a restaurant. Not only that, it's a lot more. I'd rather turn in cans than dig a bushel of steamers and try to hustle them. That's total BS. Well, it, it could happen. It could. And I could get hit by a car going to get the mail. There's a lot of things that could. We're now down to a point where they are shutting us down based on a federal US FDA food standard, not a local level. And you haven't even mentioned the fact that, that Patrick Kearney has filed legislation or filed an amendment to the to the I did to the budget. I did, sir. I did, Dave. Before you call oh. me out, Dave, do your homework. I, and be I'm, not, I'm not calling you out. You were skipping and, and popping around. You may have said it, but I didn't hear it. House Bill 438, I believe it was. 438, 436. I mentioned it. So and you can apply I Katie Baxter's on the uh, on this call too. So if you have any questions for Kearney. She's here. Again, why is this area closed to a US FDA standard by the state for a recreational purposes only? End of question. I'd like to know the answer. Do they use all US FDA standards on all aspects of shell fishing and all aspects of commercial fishing? Are they going to shut down uh, farm stands for selling fresh corn? Is that where we're going with this? Hmm. Dave, I think you, you have a good question. And I think you had actually two, because first you mentioned about meeting more frequently and I can solve that one pretty easily where we can commit to meeting monthly and schedule it at the end of this meeting. So that was your first point. And then the second point on the, it's a good question, why? And I asked, when I asked DMF this, it was because um, other states have tried it and it hasn't worked well. Um, and that there's that, and, then we will we can invite them here to to elaborate on that and why they couldn't have two standards for commercial and rec, commercial and recreational. It's but I do. Standards. I think you have a very good question. But um, it's not two standards, Susan. It's not two standards. The model ordinance is specific to commercial interest interstate transport of shellfish. That's the model ordinance. ISSP and NSSP, that's what it is. It has nothing to do. And the US FDA has, has told me they have zero interest in recreation. This is all done by the state. Okay, then the that, state, Jeff again, Kennedy, that's a good question. Then why would the state, why is the state doing this? We can, we can ask them that. Did, um, so did, Katie, oh, Katie Baxter, Baxter is raising her hand, let me. Unmute, Katie. Okay. You should be good. Can you? 
You have to unmute, Katie. Uh, Brianna, can you help me again? Because I don't, I feel it. I'm supposed to have the power to do this, but I can't. Katie, you're talking, but we can't hear you. It's, it's yeah. okay. So, 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 so we can ask her to unmute. I, right? I, I unmuted myself. And then oh, great. I, okay. I meant to, I so, did that. Okay. Yeah. So no, Sorry no about that. So, I, so go ahead, Katie. We didn't hear you. Sure. I Hello, everyone. I just wanted to follow up with Dave's points because, as you know, Rep Kearney did work closely with House Council to formulate the language of that bill. And House Council pretty much came to that same conclusion as Dave was just explaining, that the model ordinance pertains to commercial fishing. So what's happening within the DMF can be explored and needs might need some fleshing out. And that legislation, the budget amendment was filed uh, two weeks ago, so pretty quickly. Um, I don't know how many of you had time to act upon that and reach out to other legislators, but um, there is something to be said about reviewing the intent of the model ordinance and the and DMF's use of that to apply it to recreational fishing. And then, Susan, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I, I did attend that press conference of the Massachusetts shellfish, what was that, um, initiative? Yeah. And there was, there were two people present who did say the, um, the data being gathered regarding the recreational shellfish beds is a bit of, and I'm gonna quote it, it's a black hole. Jeff Kennedy said that. Mike, I don't know if you were on that press conference or not, but I just find that interesting. There's an open door there to work with DMF to pose some questions and keep the conversation going. And there is, we now have a piece of legislation that can continue to be brought forward within a budget or within various bills as the session goes on. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. For that information. Yeah, and, and, the, and the, I'll comment on the black hole portion. Um, years ago, we, we were required to fill out like uh, catch reports or averages for both sides of the rivers. And, and frankly, we haven't seen that in a couple of years, like kind of estimating what catch was caught recreationally. Um, Marshall did have five commercial um, blue mussel diggers for the rivers. However, they, not, not one guy ever did it. It was a hundred dollar permit and it, there really wasn't enough blue mussels in that portion of the river to sustain it. So they never really acted on it because they kind of come and go. They kind of come one year to the next year, there's very little blue mussel. So there wasn't enough product to even do that, which is okay. So, but as far as I know, there's never been any commercial in the rivers. We, Marshall doesn't even have any commercial regulations, just recreational. The only thing commercial that we have is for Situate, which is the Briggs Harbor area. So yeah, just to, to understand, the conf I'm a little confused here. Who has shut the river down? <laughs> well, you talk to DMF, they said FDA wants the closure. Wants the closure, and DMF is enforcing it. Yes. So, Dave, back to you. It is FDA, I guess, that's closing it. And, I, and yes, I, DMF is enforcing the FDA rule. I spoke with Bess Ormond at Winter Park, Florida, US FDA, top of the line. We had a great conversation. My conversation was based on the fact that they're using a uh, an interstate transport of shellfish model ordinance for not not as not only just for what we what we ship out but what's imported into this country this is a national this is a nationwide this is like trying to control lettuce you know it, it, all of those things so so when i spoke to her and i said to her you know we have and I, in my letter that i wrote and i hope you guys were forwarded that by hope so forwarded to you 
that yeah, I said. Yeah, we can post it too if you want. That's fine. You know, the, the, those were the questions that were raised, and the discussion that I had with her was, you know, why why would you take a recreational only area and use a commercial standard to control it? And she but said again, that was Dave, th thanks for that. But again, it is the FDA that made the decision employing the rule. No. no. So who made the decision? Only, the, only, the only reason they're using the model ordinance is for the exportation of, of, of oysters. That's basic, that's the, that's the plot of it. There is some other few things there. But again, it's the federal government, FDA, enforcing a law that you don't agree with. It's not a law, it's not a law. A guide or whatever, a, a, a code. Well, there's a the, difference between, there's a difference between policy and regulation, as Sue would know. But the FDA is deciding this. They're not deciding anything. They said to the state, if, if, you want it, if you want interstate transport of shellfish to the European market, meaning oysters, then, you, then, then we strongly suggest that you adopt our guidelines, our policy. And that being the case, these are some of the, these are the rules that we go by. What so they did the, was we don't, even, we don't even have an oyster population in the river, an edible oyster population in the river. So we have shellfish. Yeah, so, so Dave- You have shop cell clams and you have razor clams. Those are the, those are the two most populated product. Go ahead, I mean, Mike. So, yeah, so what, what Mr. Dawson is saying, basically we're being um, kidnapped into the federal standard and the state standard for oyster aquaculture and we're only recreational shellfish, and basically we're being held to the same standards, and and it has to be separated some way that recreational CB should be a different category. Everything else in the Commonwealth is different. You have recreational lobster, and you have commercial lobster, and you have commercial bass. You have commercial, you have recreational bass. We're being held to a higher standard, and I think that with the work of Kearney's office and O'Connor's office, I think something good will come out of that. Um, however, is this going to take a little time? And back to Dave's point. No one's giving anything away in the rivers. Um, it's pretty clear that the citrus sewer plant sh should have probably never ever been there. I know a lot's changed in the last 40, 50 years, but that's nothing we can undo besides putting an outflow pipe off a third cliff. And you know, that might not even be enough, but I'm not an expert on that stuff. So no one's giving up on anything. But if, if the marine fisher says, hey, well, if we can get something back, I think it's a win. So I, I don't give up very easily. I think everybody knows that, but you know, I mean, we got to play by the rules. I mean, we're, we're only a town entity, we, you know, that's why the state's kind of facing the same thing of, you know, they're being mandated or forced to, 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 you know, abide by federal law. I mean, what are we supposed to do? I mean, the town can't act on its own. The town doesn't have the money to, to go out and do their own shellfish samples. We don't have an approved lab. I mean, we would never be able to do that. You know what I mean? Like I said in the beginning of the meeting, you know, the talks are going, the legislation, the senators are on this, you know, they're looking to get funding to help this out. I mean, we're in, we're next in queue. I mean, this was only a couple of months ago where this was dumped on our lap. And, you know, after Plymouth, we're next. I mean, I don't think we were going to trump Plymouth with the oyster aquaculture down there, but let's see what comes out of Plymouth. And I said that at a previous meeting, I said, you have three towns fighting for competing interests. Let's see what comes out of that. Let's see how Duxbury and Plymouth and Kingston get classified if they're truly approved, can do, can do, conditionally approved. Let's see what happens when that study is done over the next couple of weeks. And let's see, let's see if Marine Fisheries puts any teeth back into the FDA. Because if it's good enough for those guys, it'll be good enough for us. So let's let's just give it a couple of weeks and see what happens. And I'm right. and I'm more than willing to meet once a week if you like. I don't I have plenty of time. I'm retiring Coast Guard in July. My, my, my time is freeing up, so I'm, I'm invested into this, in this as well. I'm a, I dig both sides of the river. I haven't been able to dig all year either, so, you know, I'm in the fight as well. But my, my you, point is this. What honey can you do with vinegar? My, my, my point is this, Mike, is the difference between Plymouth and the rivers is Plymouth has a no. commercial aspect to it, okay? That's where I'm at on it. Number one. Number two, my, my email from the state this week was there are zero plans to do any dilution testing in the river at the situate plant. Zero because of the travel restrictions that have been imposed 
on the FDA. Those, the, that's the email from Jeff Kennedy on Tuesday. They have zero idea when they're going to do it. I thought the great during, that, during that time, I mean, I'm only telling you what I was told. I'm on them every single week. And, and, well, and I am a pain in their ass, and I get it. And it's not unprofessional. It's how you have to get the juice out of the orange here. And, I, and I'm not going to sit back, and I'm not going to let them dictate to me a policy that's flawed. If we sat here and we said to everybody on this panel, you have to go get a commercial driver's license. The registry is requiring you to do that. But we don't drive trucks. We don't drive 20,000 GVW trucks, but they're making you do it. You'd ask why? Why, why am I being made? To, well, you might have the opportunity to drive a FedEx truck. That's, that, that doesn't sound right. This whole thing doesn't sound right. And I've been on this from the beginning that it's not right. It's not what they're doing. And we need to push this. We need to support Senator uh, Patrick, um, Representative Kearney's um, amendment to the to the to the budget we need to get it out there in front of people we need people to support that and we need the control of our shellfish beds and how they're run within our house and we shouldn't be held to a national standard i talked to Bess Orman. and she they have a six inch tide change in tampa florida that's their tide i said we have nine and a half feet there's a difference we're being blanket we weren't we weren't held hostage we were sacrificed, and that's and that's how I call it. And I've call, and I've told that to Kennedy, and I've told that to Sawyer. Okay, we have zero testing coming up, and I, and not not until it's uh, Plymouth has been closed for three and a half years. Three and a half years pre-COVID, and I won't accept it. Okay. Um, Dave, you, I mean, you bring up good points and I think we should, in our next meeting, we should invite DMF to elaborate on this. Cause I, I think you bring up good points. It doesn't mean we don't stop testing. I think you probably need to take many different routes. Um, Craig has um, his hand up. I just asked, I just, you should be able to speak, Craig. Okay, thank you. I mean, um, I, know, I know all this is, based around like uh, consumption of raw shellfish. When we, when we dig in the river, the North River, it's all soft shell and we're cooking it. it are we being held to a higher standard because of that? Is it, is it I mean, did, did we don't, it, it's all soft shell digging and it's all cooked. Um, and is, am I trying to, am I splitting hairs there or? It, no, can we that's, make that's an definitely exception? part of the equation. It's a definitely great, part of the yeah. equation. You're right. Can we can we carve out an exception for that, or is that is that something that's too difficult? It can definitely be asked. I, go ahead, if Dave. I can, if I can, so um, yeah, go ahead, Dave. There's a um, that that discussion has been had. They don't care. Okay. They, they have they have no interest. They haven't. They're not able to. They're not able to sp specify and be specific on an area. At one conversation, Jeff Kennedy says this is a public health issue. It's a non-issue issue, and it could be an issue. And in other conversations that he's had with with Representative Kearney, he's 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 uncomfortable treating commercial and recreational separately based on the fact that somebody might call them out on it. And that's fact. So you're getting two sides of it. If you look on the North Shore where, where Jeff Kennedy is the supervisor up there, there isn't any open shellfish beds. The whole place is closed. You might get a spot here or there. That's just his MO. And, I, and, and, the, and the work that O'Connor and Kearney have done is amazing. And, uh, and I'll be on the horn to, to Lynch this week and, and we're going to get this fixed. I just think we have to keep fighting it. That's my opinion. I, I don't believe it's, I don't believe we should lay down. I don't believe that we should negotiate from a position of, of, of weakness where we're trying to give up something that we shouldn't even give up in the first place. So to your Dave. point, Craig, they don't care about whether we cook it or not. I've explained that to them. 
Okay. Again, US FDA is willing to sit down. All I've heard about over the last four months is let's get the stakeholders together and nothing is happening. Let's get them together and sit down and figure it out. It's, it's not that difficult to figure out. I, I really don't think it is. Okay. Any other questions? Is Jamie back or no? He originally had a question and then he's back, but maybe his question was answered. Oh, there we go. Um, all right. You should be able to unmeet yourself, Jamie. All right. I know I'm <laughs> sorry about that. Phone died, plugged in, but for some reason it was still draining. Um, you may have covered this because I, I obviously wasn't a part of it. I came back about 15 minutes ago. Uh, just going back to what Mike believes will be uh, that, that there, there may be a percentage of the river open. Um, what, what are the chances that, uh, the, that the backside of the spit, which is, you know, um, a really popular spot for, for digging steamers, whether that might be, uh, seeing as how it's, its proximity is so far away from the plant, whether that might be, in Mike's opinion, one of the areas that might be um, that might open back up again. So oh, I'm not an expert. I'm not going to speak for the marine fisheries, Jamie. But if I was a betting man, I, I would say that portion would be closed. It's, it's right adjacent to where the uh, Herring River comes out at. It's right there. It's within a half a mile, not or less. I mean, like I said, I don't know for sure. Um, I'm not sure what's actually going to happen. But <clears throat> if we're able to get some portions back, I think the closest portions to the Herring River and the outflow pipe would be closed. I mean. You know, but we'll see. Well, I, I thought mean, it was within like four or five hundred feet of the mouth. Say four, you know. I figured uh, its proximity from the mouth of the river, which is like where you're at in open ocean, would would make it, you know, more apt to be open. Are you are you talking like on the northern side of the spit where the old Herring River used to flow into the Herring River? Are you talking uh, about right, right at the end of the boardwalk? So you park, you can park right next to those houses down by Third Cliff. And then there's the boardwalk that you walk out and then hang a right. And then you're on the back side of the spit right in there. Um, uh, it's sand when you first approach it. Then there's that little river that if you wade through it at really low tide, you end up on the more muddy spot. Yeah, that's the, the big the hump that's there. Yeah. Well, the steamer is as big as hamburger patty. Yeah, so you think they're that's going to close not. down. Yeah. Not. Well, both of them are pretty big. It's not a bad thing. But, um, like I said, I mean... I can't speak for them. I can't speak to the dive study or the dilution study, but if if portions were closed, I mean, that's pretty close. That's one of the closest beds to the outflow pipe of coming out of the Herring River. But, you know, I, 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 don't, I can't answer it. You know, I wish I could give you an answer, but until we get that testing done, we'll see where it lies. I mean, right. the whole river flows, and we, we discussed that before. I said, you know, you have two rivers flowing out into the new inlet, How's Duxbury, how's Duxbury creating more flow than, than we are? I mean, we have two major rivers that it's almost 27 miles of coastline up and down all the way through Pembroke that flow out of the rivers and all the way down towards Marshfield Center to flow out of the South Rivers. That's a lot of water in there that comes out of there. And, yeah. and, I, challenge, and, I, and I challenged the dilution study from the get-go of a thousand to where it was right out of the gate. And that was put into an email when this first came out. I, 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 don't, I don't believe it one bit so that that brings me to the that brings me to the one other question that i had okay and i think this kind of um this is where dave is coming from right and i apologize if i missed any content uh, in the past 20 minutes um yeah. but so we're kind of moving forward with the idea that the division of marine marine fisheries is doing the best they can and that we're going to work our way th through this and hopefully come out on the other side with some measure that retaining some measure of 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 uh, uh, of a shellfish uh you know, uh, um, life in situate. Um, but I guess I'm piggybacking on um, some of the comments made by Chris Sherman, president of Island Creek and former president of Mass Aquaculture, when he in the three bay system uh, um, Zoom conference that happened about a month ago, he was, at, was adamant that the, that, that three bay system is responsible for the lion's share of aquaculture and oysters coming out, uh, a, a lot of money in this state, and that he believed that we needed to fight this. 
And I think that's what Dave is, is, is talking about, that he doesn't want to take this line down, that he thought that through legislation or through pushing back, that we should be able to not, not just work our way through by having die studies and, and doing what the FDA expects us to do, but, but by pushing and fighting back. Um, is there, has, has, uh, has there been any, been any headway with that? Do you have, have you heard any, any um, comments from, from, the, from anybody involved with that? As far as the dye study and dilution study? Um, I guess just not laying down and trying to not even be, uh, to, to push back um, in general, you know, and not uh, to, to, to roll back the FDA regulation that is being forced upon us. I think that was Chris's hope. Yeah. yeah I, I, well, it's a couple of points. No, no one's laying down. No one's barring or negotiating behind us. So give me this, I'll give you that, we'll go away. No one's doing that. I, I do know, like Greg started today, that the Plymouth study is almost done. We are next in line. It'll be situate, and then it goes to the Cohasset sewer plant. And he said that the test will be done. Will be done in June? Probably not. But he also mentioned, you know, getting the professors from UMass Dartmouth and getting the legislation money, which Kearney and O'Connor and everybody else is working on, right? Which is good. And then they are planning to challenge, right, the FDA stuff. Okay, they okay. don't. They don't really concur either. You know. And all, 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 the, all these samples that have come out of the plant so far have been pretty good, right? So I, I think we're there. I, I know Dave's very, very passionate about it. So are you. Um, I think I, I, it's not going to happen overnight. I, I think they're doing what they can. I, I think they I'm, – I'm actually pleased that they're doing more than what I thought was going to happen. So I know people well, are – What's happened here about the dye study happening in June because, or, or around June because – I, I, the opposite. I, I just say June. I said we're we're next in line after Plymouth gets done. So right. and that, I'm not sure if you're in a call. I said I, I'm really eager to see what came out of the Plymouth study, right? So if, if the oyster guys were fighting back in Duxbury, which they should, right? And I know we're not commercial, but let's see how they came out of it. What what changes will happen in Duxbury, Kingston, Plymouth after they just tested the Plymouth plant in situate? I mean, in Plymouth. So let's see what happens so if it came out great then if it's good enough for them why isn't it good enough for us when we're not even um we're not even uh, conducting commercial harvesting in the rivers it's strictly recreational i, I get that we're held to two different standards actually we're being held to one standard when we're actually not doing we're not not doing any commercial i, I get that but i think that's where kearney filed house bill 432 to have the towns take over the flats and things like that. But I think the discussions are being made. I, I really do. I'm trying to be as optimistic as I can. You know, no one's, like I said, there's no deals being done. I mean, I think a lot of people have a lot of hands in this and, and it's being worked on. So, Good. You know, who Thanks, makes the decision? Who, who knows? But I mean, people have been contacted and it's, it's ongoing. I think we're a lot better now than we were two months ago in the last meeting. Well, at least they're testing the plant. They've also been testing Citroen Harbor as well. And they've also been doing more samples of the shoreline and testing uh, Briggs Harbor as well with the help of the uh, Massachusetts Environmental Police doing samples up there. So and also, I'm not sure if you're going to call, but I would like to work with, on with MOU with Marshfield and Situate and Cohasset so we can all do water samples. So it's not always Marshfield doing the rivers and Marshfield and Situate, which we have done for many, many years. But it's kind of hard for me to be a marshal and situate shelter constable and take a marshal boat to Cohasset with also kind of written MOU. I will gladly do it. I'm sure my town would gladly support. I'm sure situate would too, but you know, that's what kind of has to be done. And that's the push to get more samples means more areas be open sooner. Thanks, Mike. Um, Dave, did you have another question? Yeah, I was just going to say, and I know Mike attended this meeting, they they were actually talking about in the Tri-Bay area of conditionally improving, uh, conditionally approving the entire area, which may, which would make it um, not a viable sale from port, and that they were exploring the fact of taking the shellfish offshore for 10 to, 10 to 2 weeks for it to pur purify, if you will, and then be then be harvested, uh, uh, ret retrieved and sold. So 
they there's a, there's a, a again black and white between our discussion and theirs, and I get what they're going, and I and I and I and that's you know that's what they have to deal with, and I support whatever way they can work with it. We, again, this is this is a situation on potential risk, not actual, not. There's no historical data to support any kind of sickness, anything coming out of there. This, this is, again, I, I keep going back to it, recreation versus commercial. And, and we need to support um, Patrick on his, on his amendment to the budget on that 432 and, and stop it right there. It needs to be addressed. And they're unwilling to gather together and talk about it and work through it now. They're unwilling to do that the state, and I'm talking about the state, they will not do it. And I've requested a hundred times, but then they have no interest in it. Well, that's where we get the Senator Lynch involved and Patrick O'Connor and uh, Patrick Kearney to make that happen, Dave. Right, exactly. We need to support that effort. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 I, and, I, and I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that they are working on it. I got to email them. Uh, for school vacation, so I, I know he's engaged in it. He, he's, you know, he's not going to let it die. So the, the talks are there. Like I said, I cut the great story today, and he said the Citro plan is next after Plymouth. But I'm, I'm, I'm a little hesitant that if the three base system, the Duxbury, Kingston, and Plymouth, are now conditionally approved when they were truly approved, it's not a good thing for us. I will say that. Right. And again, they have way more commercial activity down there than we do. Again, right. apples well, and oranges. And I need to make sure that we continue to push the recreational only area for harvest. Right. Right. No, I mean, there's, 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 we, we get that we're being lumped into the commercial trade and industry being recreational. I mean, Plymouth, situated Plymouth, I mean, Kingston, Plymouth and Duxbury also have recreational as well. So let's see what comes out of that. Right, but it's combined. That's a combined. That's you know. That's the shared use. That's the coexist commercial and recreation together. Obviously, the commercial will trump the recreation because again, is the commercial guy harvesting in a recreational area and being held to a different standard? You right. Know, if we had a viable commercial activity in the rivers, I would support that. Number one. Number two, the South River. If that's the place that's open then I would say right now we need to start getting grants to replant the place because, because number one, it's, it's a great place to shellfish, but there's not uh, what I would say a sustainable harvest there for recreation, number one. Number two, it's far more dangerous for anybody coming from the North River or the Herring River to get to the South River to do that activity. There's far more potential risk there for, for, for well, to, to go I, through I, that I would, waterway. I, I would disagree with that, Dave, because you don't even have to go through the mouth of the river to get to the South River. You can come off Central Street, you can go to the Ridge Road boat ramp, and even avoid the whole mouth of the river. So no, I'm, I, just, I'm just saying from the situate side, if we were uh, for situate residents to get down to those flats, you would have to. You would have to. I, I, I get that, Dave. I, I, I get the logistics of it. Um, there's people that go digging Briggs Harbor to walk out a half mile. There's people that walk out from. Um, streets on the side of Marshall out to the flats of the South River. So if people are going to, I know, Dave, if people are want to dig, they're going to dig. But your, your argument is no different than saying a guy in January hops in the kayak at the uh, conservation park and kayaks out to the New England spit area on that high hump area that Jimmy discussed. That's, that's dangerous as well. And there have been people stuck out there and the tides come in. I've seen it on camera and I've seen people respond. I responded to the people in the South River for the same thing. But those are things that can be stuck, discussed. But let's try to get the flats open first. So, but I, I, I'm, I, and I'll say it now publicly that I really want to see what marine fisheries comes back with with the Plymouth sewer plant and what is proposed back to the FDA. That's what I want to see. And I think all of our talk up until this point leads to that and that was discussed at previous meetings that hey let's see what comes out of the Plymouth thing because they clearly have a bigger dog in the fight than we do you know economically right not recreationally but let's just see if marine fishery I mean division marine fisheries fights back with some teeth to the FDA and that's why I said I said if it's good enough for them it should be good enough for us right and and on that MSI meeting the other night or the other day that zoom meeting 
they spoke candidly about the fact that they don't have a clue what the recreational activity of shell fishing means to the communities and the people that live there. It's a right. It's a born right to do it. You have the right to do it. Um, and they have no idea. And when I posed the question, as you know, to them, they, they edited my question. They pre-answered it before they spoke about it. And they didn't address the question at hand, which was, you know, who, who on MSI was represented the recreational activity? And they mumbled and bumbled and nobody knew. And then they tried and they had one guy out of Bonstable. That was it. So I, I'm not, yes, I'm cynical and I'm tired and I'm worn out, but I won't quit. So that's, that's my, if, if somebody needs to know what my attitude, my overall attitude is, that's why. We know that, Dave. I know. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that you won't quit. I should, but I won't. No, I appreciate it. I don't want you to quit. Um, you bring really good information and insight. And I think it's um, something that we need to um, connect with DMF to have them here to talk about. So are there other questions um, or comments before we? I can send that e invite to Susan for the next meeting. If we pick a date, I'll send the invite to Marine Fish and invite them to this call. Yeah, do you want to pick um, a date now okay. with the first? Thursday of the month work. Yeah, so basically it's three weeks. To try to get in a routine. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm, I, I don't want to pick the first Wednesday. Um, oh. um, I want to oh. make sure we're not on the waterways schedule, but that we're on a different day because people. Do the first Thursday of the month, we could do that. Okay. Would that work for um, Jeff? I need a quorum. So Jeff, Dave. Yes, uh, Susan, that would work for me as well. Okay. I was checking my schedule, but yeah. Okay. Good. Dave. Good for me. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Scott. Yeah. That works for me. Awesome. Okay. So let's, let's plan on that and we'll send an invite to DMF um, and then also have updates as well. Oh, sorry. Katie's asking a question. Whoa. For some reason. All right, I asked you to unmute, so you should be able to unmute. Okay, so I just wanted to follow up in regards to any support regarding the budget amendment that Rep Kearney filed. The Senate is working on the budget this month in May. So prior to your June meeting, things are going to be happening on the Senate side with budget amendments and outside sections. So somewhere along there, you need to have your communication channels within your membership so that you can be reaching out to the Senate to support whatever um, Senator O'Connor might choose to file. I don't have any updates on that. Do you have, oh, I was, I was gonna ask if you had any updates if anyone was gonna file. And I, I'll check with Rep Kearney. I've, I've been waiting. Um, yeah, I'm waiting to hear, but I'll, I'll follow up with you. But I just wanted to make you aware of that timetable because right. Okay. Before June. Thank you, Katie. That's good. Um, we should reach out to Senator O'Connor. Would be the obvious one for us to, since he's our representative. And, and I'll, I'll do that as well. I'll, I'll email him and support it. Okay. You know, and that's and that and I think it's very important for people to know that Patrick O'Kearney and Sarah O'Connor do work very, very well together, very well. Yeah. Should we take a vote? Then it would be official that the Shellfish Advisory Committee is also supporting it. Um, sure. Would Would you be so? I would propose um, to um, vote if we are in support of. Give me the number again. Was it? Am I right with four thirty two? Yes. Fourth, um, HB 432 to file, that's, that's to encourage, house. right, to encourage, I was going to say to encourage this, our Senator to file um, similar legislation on the House side. Right. Well, can I take it one step further? That, sure. Uh, the, the committee, we, we draft a letter as a committee to go to the selectman, then up to the Senator O'Connor's 
and Kearney's office for our support. Okay. Anyone else want to add more things to it? <laughs> no? All right, sounds good. So we're going to draft a letter of support um, from the Shellfish Advisory Committee to go. Oh, should, should we vote on that? Yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. So all in favor of doing that. Um, I'm going to roll call. We have to roll call because we're Zoom. So um, Jeff Palmer. I'm in, I'm in favor, yes. Um, Mike DeMeo. Dave Freeman. Yes. Scott Connolly. Yes. Um, and Susan Harrison, yes. So all in favor, um, unanimous. <laughs> And, and I'll take the first cut in the letter, Susan. Okay, great. Thank you much. Perfect. Um, and we're scheduling our meeting for the first Thursday in June. And as I understand it, Brianna, that's easier to schedule than you're going to use the same Zoom link. So we will we will get that agenda together. Do we want to tentatively make every first Thursday? I know July 4th weekend, it might be complicated and ugly but going forward until further notice yeah i think i am good with that yeah, yeah. so interestingly enough yeah because the first thursday in july falls on a on the first okay so july 1st is the first thursday okay so that would be a very long fourth of july weekend <laughs> if someone's taking thursday friday <laughs> saturday Easy enough to zoom in Monday, so um, Easy I enough think to zoom right in. in. Yeah. All right, I'll vote for that. Okay. I guess, do I need to do roll call again? Okay, Jeff. Yay. <laughs> Mike. Yes. Dave. Yes. And Scott, where did you go? Yes. There you are. Yes, you're at the end. And myself, yes. So all in favor, we're, cha we're taking a cadence of our meeting being for the first Thursday of the month um, and June, July, August, September onward. And on the next one, we'll invite DMF and maybe we invite and on them the to next each one, one. We're inviting DMF for the next one. So that would be, it would be an update and a agenda item where DMF shows up. Ms. Harrison, this is Seth Pfeiffer from Situa Television. Do you mind if I jump in real quick? Yeah, sure. This is perfect. Those dates you chose are fantastic. I do want to put it on everyone's radar. We are essentially awaiting word from the state regarding open meeting laws starting August 1st. So if you are not familiar with open meeting laws pre-pandemic, you all had to be in the same room. If you want to participate or take part, you have physically had to be there. So obviously with the pandemic, that has changed. We can do this now. Come August 1st, if those laws go back into effect, you will have to meet in person starting in August. We will keep yep. you posted on that certainly, but I just wanna put that on your radar. Okay, thank you. So we'll have to revisit that um, when we get the guidance, if we know by July, otherwise August. That would be great. Perfect. Excellent. As every committee will have to revisit that too. And then we'll have to fight about the rooms, like getting the right room and who's what, because that was, that was always my favorite part, finding a room. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, can't, should I make a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Sure. So moved. All right. Second. All right. All in favor of um, adjourning. Roll call. Roll, Roll call. call. Jeff. I'm in favor. Me. Yes. Dave. Yes. Mike and Scott? Yes. Okay. All right. See thank you, you David. All next month. And thank, thank you. you, everyone, for your participation. <laughs>